Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will be discussing about inductive arguments. We will start our discussion by contrasting inductive arguments with the deductive arguments. Inductive arguments, they move from specific case to general case. Whereas deductive arguments, they move from a general case to specific case. In inductive arguments, the conclusion cannot be 100% guaranteed, whereas in deductive arguments, the conclusion is 100% guaranteed. Let's understand this with the help of few examples. First time when I drank lemon juice, I experienced acidity problem. Second time when I drank lemon juice, again I experienced acidity problem. Third time when I drank lemon juice, again I experienced acidity problem. Therefore, I can conclude that I am allergic to lemon juice. If we analyze this set of statements, we can understand that they are moving from specific cases to general case. In the two arguments, they collect evidences to form conclusion. While evaluating inductive arguments, one must take into account the amount of data, quality of data, and the additional relevant data that is available. Let's take one more example. Every dog I have seen in this area is in brown color. Therefore, all dogs in this area are in brown color. If we analyze this set of statements, we can observe that they are moving from evidences to a conclusion. But what can we say about the conclusion of this argument? It may be true or it may not be true. The certainty of inductive arguments is always questionable. If there is high certainty of the conclusion, then we call such inductive arguments as a strong inductive arguments. If there is a low certainty, then we call such inductive arguments as weak inductive arguments. Inductive reasoning process has the following structure. It collects the observations, then applies a theory, and then forms a conclusion. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Every day I must drink coffee. If I don't drink coffee, I feel weak and frustrated. When I drink coffee, I feel rejuvenated. Coffee is addictive. Therefore, I am addicted to coffee. If we analyze this example, first we have collected certain observations. Then there is a theory which we have applied and finally a conclusion is formed. But what can we say about this conclusion? This conclusion may be true or may not be true. The certainty of inductive arguments is always questionable. Let us take one more example. Most Indians have dark colored skin. Danny is an Indian. Therefore, Danny has a dark colored skin. What can we say about the conclusion of this argument? The conclusion has high probability to become true. That's why it is a strong inductive argument, because it is moving from observations to a conclusion. Let us take one more example. Most Indians have black hair. John has black hair. Therefore, John is an Indian. What can we say about this conclusion? The conclusion has low probability to become true. That is why it is a weak inductive argument. Now let's go through a summary on inductive arguments. Inductive reasoning is the opposite of deductive reasoning. Inductive arguments are intended to be strong arguments. Inductive reasoning makes broad generalizations from specific observations. Inductive logic guesses the conclusion based on evidential support.